trucking bloodbath. Is it real? I don't know. I'm going to talk about it today, though. Uh, we're stopped at a... Stopped at a railroad track. I got a train going about two miles an hour up there. And this morning has been long. I have been driving for two hours. And, uh... It is taking forever to get where I'm going. School. Traffic. Now railroad tracks. This is ridiculous. But I'm going to talk about that article. It was sent to me... Uh, uh, by a gentleman yesterday uh, and uh, he wanted to know my thoughts on it I did a look I, I read that article I read a couple more articles uh, but uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, talk about that and the state of, of trucking in 2020 as I see it and what I've what I've researched and and my meager knowledge of, of trucking uh, so uh, Stay with me, and we'll get to the we'll get to the customer. Uh, we got two hundred and man, two hundred and twenty six miles to go, and this is taking forever. I'll see you later. So we made it to the customer. We got unloaded. Had to wait for a little while. Apparently they were on break or something. I don't know. So we're headed out. Uh, I don't have a load yet. We'll get one. So, uh, trucking bloodbath, uh, freight apocalypse, uh, freight crisis. I have heard and read all kinds of stuff about the situation of freight in 2019 continuing on to 2000 or 2020 so like I said earlier I was talking to a gentleman yesterday and he sent me a uh, he sent me an article to read and wanted to hear my thoughts on it so I read the article and uh, I read a few more articles and I watched some YouTube uh, commentary and uh, so uh, let's talk about that. So the article that he sent me was saying, uh, was talking about uh, the amount of trucking companies that went out of business in 2019 versus 2018. So in 2018, or there was, there, it was uh, 100 and... 180 something I believe it was is what I read I could be wrong on that number but the article that he sent me there was 640 trucking companies that went out of business in 2019 all right and the ones that we see on the TV and everything and and we read about in all these articles are are uh, these bigger companies like Celadon all right so, and I, I kind of kept up with a little bit on that Celadon thing and uh, uh, read a little bit about it. So, the one thing that the article didn't tell, it, tell you was that most of the companies that went out of business last year were smaller companies with less than 30 drivers, all right? Most of them, the majority, the overwhelming majority, according to according to the DOT, was independents with one truck, two trucks, three trucks, not much more than three trucks. The overwhelming majority. So when you're looking at numbers like that, you really have to do your research because just like in every day, every other piece of news that you get. They like to sensationalize it. 
and and then it becomes a then it becomes a uh, a uh, uh, a Facebook, an Instagram, a Snapchat, a YouTube talking point, and and then it gets blown out of proportion, right? So here's here from everything that I've read and everything that I've seen. Here's what happened. Okay, in 2018, there was there was an overabundance of of freight that needed to be shipped and an and an under uh, an underwhelming amount of truck drivers that could ship it. The shipping the the the, the transportation industry was needing drivers like mad. Okay? So just like any other industry that that created competition with shippers okay and in order to get their stuff shipped they had to raise the they had to offer more money to the shipper to the transportation uh, company to ship their freight over the last from for like 27 months is what I read is what I read okay so what that did was that artificially inflated the prices of of freight, and that in, that that raise in prices got more drivers in. More people went independent. More drivers. More more people started doing hot shots, and uh, they were making bank. I mean, making money. So it was like a heyday. It was like woohoo! going to get into trucking. I'm going to make millions of dollars and 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 set myself up. I'm going to get seven, eight, nine trucks and they're going to drive for me and and uh, I'm going to make millions. So just like everything in life, there's an ebb and the flow, right? Business goes up, business comes down. Stuff spikes and then it's got to normalize. Look at the housing industry right banks were dealing out money like crazy not really giving a crap about your credit houses were being built stuff was being shipped and then what happened the housing bubble dropped the banks couldn't collect on their money because people didn't have it and that put us into a recession for years right so now you got all these all these independents out here, and some of these bigger companies who thought that they were in the heyday, right? Spending money like crazy on on new trucks, new trailers, and 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 putting tons of money into it without without saving some for rainy days. And then and then you've got all of this influx of 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 people who are who are ready to ship. Right? And what does that do? Supply and demand. You've got you've got too many people wanting wanting to ship your freight and not enough freight to ship. So that drives the price down. Now there's other things that happened, okay? The tariffs that were put onto China stop some freight from coming in so these intermodal uh, companies saw a uh, uh, saw a drop in their in their 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 freight coming into the into the ports and they had to lay people off they had to fire people they couldn't they didn't have enough for people to ship Then you had the the hold for almost a year on on uh, on the uh, USMCA. And that hurt manufacturing. That hurt the shipping industry. Now that that is signed, 
you're going to see an influx of, of intercontinental shipping between the countries. And that's going to help. Now that uh, we're in talks with China again, and, and we're getting close to the first stages of a bill with the, uh, of, of signing some agreements with them, you're going to see more freight coming in. You're going to see you're going to see more people coming in to truck. But what it boils down to is is business. If these companies do not know how to run a business, then they're going to go out of business. If they don't know how to how to how to juke and jive with the with the the market, they're going to go out of business. I don't know that much about trucking, okay? I'm new to this, but there's one thing I do know. I know business, and business doesn't care what business it is. Business does not care. If you don't do, if you don't work your business correctly, if you don't see the the trends and move with those trends, business will bite you in the ass, and you'll know it. And that's what's happened. That's what's happened over this last year is these people don't know how to run their business and they got in and got out they didn't when it got hard they didn't want to deal with that they didn't want to mess with it so when you have an LLC that gets reported back to back to the government that you closed your business and it doesn't matter if you had a if you had a pickup truck that you were hauling a 16-foot trailer on and you were hauling a car, one car each. If you had an LLC and a DOT number or you worked on somebody else's DOT number and you had an LLC, that was a trucking business. And that's what happened. So don't buy into to all of the the hype and stuff when they're talking about the uh, freight apocalypse and, 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 you know, trucking, trucking businesses is, is in its dark ages and that kind of crap. Now, I don't buy it, all right? You gotta be smart about what you're doing. And if you're not smart about what you're doing, if all you know is I'm behind the wheel and I'm gonna get it there, and you don't know how to run the back end of your business, your business is not gonna be there, period. It's not. Just like any other business, it's not. It's not going to be there. My two cents. We're going to stop up here at exit five and we're going to find out where we're going. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but you see all these cops over here on this other side? They just tore through the median about two miles back. And then they flipped around on this overpass up here. And now they're tearing back the other direction. I don't know what they're doing, but whatever, man. Uh, we're going to pick up some uh, lumber, it looked like. About 20 miles down the road here. Then we're headed to Oklahoma City. Yay. Yeah, something's going on because there's two more cops tore through here. I'm not quite sure what what the dealio is. We're over here at Russellville, and they're just there's a bunch of them just tearing through. It's a little weird. Strange. But I'm getting. Caught in a lot of traffic down through here. I'm gonna get my butt down here, and I'd like to get back to Fort Smith before uh, before my clock runs out. Stay at the terminal tonight. That'd be ideal. But we'll see. Well, the customer took a little longer at the customers or the shipper than I thought it would. So we were able to get back to Russellville and. Uh, get parked at another stinking flying J. <laughs> I 
I would have got to Love's if I'd have had the time because there's a Love's down the road uh, about uh, 40 miles. And if I'd have had the time, I'd have went there. I wouldn't have came back here. Um, but uh, that's going to be it for today. We're going to head to um, uh, Oklahoma City tomorrow. But uh, I appreciate everybody being here and all the comments uh, about this weekend and everything. And, and uh, I'm tired. Man, all this rain and everything, working with these wet tarps and, and wet clothes and everything else, man, it, it wears you out. I don't think I've been this tired since my first month trucking. Just tired, man. So, uh, you guys leave a comment down below and uh, hit that like button. Uh, I may go take a shower before I post this. It might be about 9.30 before I get this posted. I, I'm dirty and I need a shower. But uh, I appreciate everybody being here. Leave a comment down below about uh, what I said about uh, uh, trucking apocalypse. And uh, tell me what you think. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.